live and uh, welcome everybody dan latto speaking we are live so welcome to the mindset and hustle show my name is dan latto and in today's session i want to talk to you about buying toys boys toys girls toys grown-up men's toys whatever that happens to be for you so it could be a car could be a speedboat could be a jet ski could be holidays could be drones could be camera equipment could be whatever it happens to be whatever your toy uh happens to be we've got itchy nose and also next door neighbors are out so if there's a bit of noise <laughs> it's from them so this is kind of one of the things that we're just talking about in my uh, mastermind group and it's this idea of um how do you buy a lamborghini and where does the money come from for that lamborghini and i got very specific ideas about where the money comes from to buy stuff and so when we're talking about toys let's just use cars as an example for now but again it could be holidays it could be uh it, it could be uh, i mean we've bought an inflatable pool for example an inflatable slide to go in the pool for example that's one of the toys anything that's classed as a luxury uh, a car is a luxury by the way especially one more than a thousand pounds so anything more than a thousand pounds on a car is a luxury because uh, you don't need to spend more than a thousand pounds do you you choose to spend it you want to spend it and there's reasons why you want to spend a lot of money on a car uh, but anything more than a grand anything less than a grand you can buy second hand nissan x trail in the uk what was my last car in the uk um but what i see and one of the things that absolutely sends um shivers down my spine on facebook people saying Oh, I've got this, um, look at my new toy, my new baby. And it's a £17,000 BMW or Mercedes or a Porsche or whatever, right? And I've had all of those cars except the Merc. But my, my uh, money to pay for those didn't come from a full-time job. It came from elsewhere. And that's really where I want to get into. And this is the mistake that I see people making on a regular basis, is that they're using money from a job. So they have to get in the car to take them to work to earn enough money to pay for the car that gets them to work and then they buy a house and then they leave the house to go to a job in a car and they have to have a job to pay for the car to pay for the house that they've just left to pay for all of that through a job that just doesn't make sense to me and i've not had a job for 18 years uh 17 years 18 years now uh 17 years this month actually 18 years this month i left in uh june uh 18 years ago whatever that was um when i was 29 before my 30th birthday i bought the porsche and then i went backpacking in uh june or july of that month uh and i, I wanted to do all of that before i turned 30. i'm 47 now so that's 18 years ago but this is what most people do they have a uh, an income from a job and if if you've ever read rich dad poor dad we're going to cover some of that stuff off as well but they have income from a job that then pays for their house, their car, their food, their holidays, their toys, school fees, the whole lot. And so that's really dangerous, by the way, because if you've only got one income and you lose that job, as many people have done and are about to uh, through recession and through furlough, and you know, some people are not going to go back to their jobs. I don't know how legal or illegal that is, but some people are not going to go back to their jobs, and some people don't want to go back to their job, and other people are desperate to get back to their job but i don't know if they're even going to have a job to go back to having one source of income is really dangerous okay so it's like this so this is a this is a bathtub uh do you like my bathtub this is a bathtub with feet uh this are the taps my uh, uh drawings by the way are renowned for being uh excellent this is a tap this is the little tap thing on top and, and this is bits of water going in and most people this is the plug hole and this is the water draining away okay for most people this is the income source they've got one income source and i think that's really really dangerous okay but that one income source pays for a house it pays for the car that's a car it pays for the kids school fees it pays for food it pays for holidays and we've got one income source if that income source stops they've got a massive problem the house goes for car goes and your job as an investor or your job as a human being okay not just an investor but your job right now is to have multiple streams of income so you want another tap i don't care how you make that tap a side hustle buying and selling cars 
buying and selling websites, uh, creating some business of some kind, buying and selling property, rent to rent, lease options, property sourcing. It doesn't matter what that is, but you've got to design another tap that's going to give you more cash flow. These are taps, by the way. They're good, aren't they? And then after that one, you've got to create another tap. And this is all income. And what happens is that here, I can actually use a different colour. Here, on one income source, it goes straight down the plug hole and it disappears. You, you haven't got any income. Like, you've got one income, but you've got a savings because it's all spent on houses and cars and food and holidays and toys and so on. What you want to do is the more income sources that you can have is slowly but surely you're starting to fill up with that. And what you want to do is you want to get yourself to the stage that you've got so many of these income streams coming in. Like so many income streams coming into this that this this bath, which is your wealth, right? The water is cash, the bathtub is your wealth. But you keep filling this up and eventually the thing's pouring out all over the place. You've got so much cash coming in from so many different income streams. But you can't even spend it as fast as you want to. And you don't want to spend it that fast anyway because you want to build in a, a, a buffer. So you've got, you know, if, if something hits the fan, you've got a buffer so that you're not then going to get yourself into a situation where you lose all of this. This is one of the things that we see. Success is a really poor teacher because what happens is people get really successful, then they get really cocky, then they start buying Lambos and Porsches and Ferraris and uh, luxury condos and all this stuff, right? And, and if something happens, poof, and it's gone, it's wiped out. And we don't want that for you, but what we do want for you is multiple streams of income. Multiple streams of income. I write that up there just so that anybody who's coming look at this and go, what is that craziness? Because people join and leave all the time as we go live. But uh, this is what I need you to have, multiple streams of income, so you're topping up this bath. Now, this is why knowing what your um, expenses are every single month and how much is going out. Like this bit, the drain, this is the plug hole, this is the money going out and going into the drains. You want to know how much of that actually is going out and that will help you know how much of this extra income you need to start filling up your wealth. The bathtub is the wealth. The uh, income is cash flow. That's the water filling up the bathtub. Most people, they've got one and it goes all the way through uh, and it, it, it's gone. I'm just looking for my... Oh, here it is. And it's gone. I was looking for this to rub it out. Because it's a dreadful diagram. But hopefully you get the idea behind that. Let's talk about toys then. And let's use it as um, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Uh, we should not, don't, we've not taught any Rich Dad Poor Dad stuff in years. But let's do it. So if we, we were to do uh, an income, an expense statement. Let me just make sure you can see that. Let me get rid of that here. Let me hide that. There we go. Okay, um, assets, liabilities, liable, it is. Okay, this is income, and this is expenses. So most people have an income, and it's a job, okay? They buy a house, which is a liability, because it takes money out of the pocket. They have a car, £17,000 BMW, £28,000 Merc, £50,000 Porsche. And they've got zero assets. So their only income uh, is from a, a, a job, effectively, and that's from you having to go out, which is where you're exchanging your time for money. So you have a job that comes in, and it pays for your £17,000 car. Okay, so it's paying for that, and it's paying for your house. And the problem is that if you lose your job, you've lost your house, potentially, and you've lost your car. You might have insurance to cover those like uh, payment insurance and so on. Uh, one of the things that the wealthy do is that they protect what they've got. And we see this a lot where people are not protecting anything. It's just a comment. Let me just see what that says. 
uh, yeah, which Doug Paul does. There we go. Thank you, Brother Tobit. Brother Tobit. Thank you, Brother. <laughs> okay, so, but this is the problem, is that people have a job, and they spend it, and it's gone. And what we need you to do is start getting some assets. And this could be a house. It could be a business. Could be a training course. Could be a book. And each one of these is going to start adding more income. And you're going to have so much income, you, you can give up your job. And by the way, if you ever get to the stage where you're going to give up your job, you need to have something to replace that job. Because, you know, I, I retired the first time uh, before I was uh, 30. We bought a Porsche. We um, uh, left Dell where we used to work and went traveling. And I came back and half a portfolio was empty. And at that point, we decided to start the lettings agency. Uh, but during that period, I remember having a conversation with a friend of mine. And he's like, oh, if I was you, I'd just be playing golf all day. Bear in mind, I'm 29. And I'm like, yeah, but who with? He's like, ah, because all my mates were working. He's like, yeah, I didn't think of that. What are you going to do? So you have to have something to do. If, if you've got all these assets and they're generating an income, you've still got to do something. People say, why do you start businesses and buy businesses and sell businesses? What else am I going to do? You can only jet ski so many times. Walking on the beach is amazing. Even that gets boring. Everything gets boring after a while if you just do it too much. So you've got to have different things to challenge you. And I think we are challenge overcoming machines. Uh, we are uh, machines that search for meaning. Um, uh, there's a good book, by the way, called Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. You should get that book. Uh, but we're constantly looking for meaning in our lives. And this is one way of doing it by starting businesses and looking after assets. But the whole point here is that your assets give you income and your income pays for your house and your income pays for your car. And if you've not got any assets, your thousand, your car should be a thousand pounds max. If all you've got is a job, you shouldn't be getting a 500, 600 pound a month car. That's crazy. It's madness. And I know that people don't like me saying that. Well, you know, I work hard and I, I deserve it. I deserve it. All you've done when you've bought yourself a car through job, through job income, all you've done, let me just do this for a uh, dramatic effect. Uh, brother, I've seen your message uh, and I'll come on to that short before you. Let's just get rid of this. Okay. If you're in a job, and you're buying a car using money from your job. A car equals prison. How's that for dramatic effect? All you've done, so you've got a job. That's paying £500 a month towards your car. Okay. All you've done now is you've forced yourself uh, to, to create yourself a little prison. And that prison is your job because you can't escape that prison because in order to escape that prison, you have to get rid of the car. And people program themselves to say, yeah, but I love my car. I deserve my car. I'm worth it. I work hard. I play hard. Therefore, I should get, get a car. And all they've actually done is built themselves a nice, tiny little prison and they don't even realize it. We're slaves to the system and we don't even know that we're slaves to the system because the system is so insidious but this is how we're brought up we're brought up to think that we should have a nice car and you should but the income from a car should come from an asset this now turns into freedom and we're all freedom loving um capitalists aren't we i'm a capitalist i don't see anything wrong with being capitalist we, we'd like to make money because we know that making money gives us freedom. And those people that go, oh, no, if you make a load of money, you can't be very nice. That's crazy. You can be even nicer. It gives you freedom to help whoever you want. It just doesn't make sense. But again, it's about pre-programming. Uh, so brother asked, oh, he made a statement, actually. Let me just find my mouse. Here it is. Uh, so uh, brother was saying he wants to build cash flow through passive income. Brother, are you doing that right now? And have you got any ideas as to how you're going to do that? Because we can write up on the board some ideas that you can do for creating cash flow. Okay, so I'll give you an example. We make about, I don't know, 
between one and two thousand pounds a month on this next strategy completely passive um depends on the month but we make about between one and two grand a month sometimes it's more sometimes it's a bit less but between one and two a month that's between 12 and twenty-four thousand pounds a year and it's an online course my online course is 27 pounds that it gives between 1,000 to 2,000 pounds profit every single month. It's completely passive. We put that on top as well. The reason we put headlines on is just because people come in and out of the stream and they want to know what we're talking about. Uh, so this is passive income. One day I'm going to work on my writing on the whiteboard. Uh, I know you can't kind of see that. Oh, it's fine. You can just see it. Okay, uh, brother, tell me about your passive income. Tell me about what, what ideas you've got for passive income. I'm going to stick a few more ideas up here. Uh, but number one, then, is an online course. Number two is a book. Uh, I'm a little bit hypocritical here, by the way, because I haven't got the book. I know you, we're all supposed to be Amazon bestsellers, but that's really not that difficult to do, is it? <laughs> you sell 70 copies on the right day in the right um, uh, section. You become an Amazon number one bestseller. I've got, I've got several friends who've done that. Anyway, a book. Now, what you could do, and I haven't done yet, but we need to one day get around to it. So busy buying businesses right now. But what you could also do is once you've got your online course, and by the way, let me just put in the, um, let me just put this in. According to UK slash course. Did I spell that right? Yeah. So if you want to know how to make an online course, uh, it's 27 quid. You can buy how to make an online course. And that will literally show you exactly step by step what I did. It's like 115 videos over 15 modules. There's loads of content in there. But, but once you've created your online course, which is so much easier than writing a book, okay? So you do that first, then you can write your book. Where do you get your book from? Well, you've already stood in front of the camera talking about the online course and, and giving 95 videos over 17 modules, whatever that happens to be, you just get that typed up, put into 17 different chapters, four or five subsections per chapter, you've now got yourself a book. Let's say you sell that book online and it's, like it's up to you, you could, you could sell a book for 27 quid. Okay, but then you discount it and you, you drop it down to um, something like, I don't know, 10 quid. And then you could actually sell that on Kindle, okay? And if you're selling, I don't know, how many copies of that do you want to sell? Let's say you're selling uh, 25 copies a month, oops, equals 250 pounds a month, which is uh, 3,000 pounds a year. So you've got this one, which is about, call it 12. Can you see that on there? Yeah, you can. You've got this one, which is three. What else can you do? Uh, by the way, you just made a £15,000 income off these two things. And you can do this within 14 days, the top one. That's what the training course shows you how to do it. And you could do this. this that's going to take a bit longer because you have to actually spell stuff right. The beauty of making online video courses is your grammar doesn't matter. Your spelling doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about full stops and semicolons. You can just talk to camera like I do. And I sound like this and we still sell between £1,000 and £2,000 uh, pounds worth. Let's just have a look. Uh, brother, I thought about those two books and courses, but my main focus right now uh, is building an ATM business. I got that. Okay, an ATM business. I got it. What do you mean by an ATM? You mean a, a business that you put out there and money just comes in? Or do you mean a physical ATM? You know, where you put your card in and it's a bank? Like, you could do that too, by the way. That's very passive income. Just explain what that is and I'll, I'll crack on uh, while we uh, wait for you to do that. Um, okay, what else? What else can we do for some sort of passive income? Well, this property. And what happens is people say, Prop I haven't got deposits for a property down. I can't, all my income goes out on house, rent, or, or mortgage, my car, which you should sell and get a thousand pound piece of junk. Nissan X Trail, love my Nissan X Trail, by the way, bright red thing. Just dump everything in the back. You could go to the tip. Nobody ever asks you questions. As a property investor, wonderful car. Great on fuel. Love that car. Spent a grand on it. Yeah, you know, 
forgot to put oil in it one time. It just it just keeps on going, right? You might not look amazing and successful, but if you're already amazing and successful, why do you need to prove to others? You already know it doesn't matter. So some people go, yeah, but property, I can't get into property because I'm spending all my money on all these other things. We're just showing you straight away how to make £15,000 a year. Let's say that this one takes a month to do and this one takes three months to do. So we're what? We're in June, right? At the time we're recording, June 2020. Why do you like, get it done? Three months. As you go into 2021, what else are you going to do this year? Your holidays are cancelled. There's no, nothing else to do. You might as well start creating courses, start generating some passive income. That's the whole point, right? Start replacing your income. You've been furloughed, maybe, so you're making 80%. Now you can start building with some other stuff. So property, like it could be rent to rent. Let's cover rent to rent, not keen on it, but it's a good starting point. So you can rent a place from a landlord for let's say six cent a one bed flat for 700 quid. And you can rent that per night at 50 pounds. Um, let's do some easier maths. Let me just put the calculator, it's up anyway. Like, I don't like rent to rent to service accommodation. Uh, 700 divided by 50 is 14 nights. So, 15 pounds a night equals 14 nights. If you can get more than 14 nights, so let's say you can make 20 nights uh, a month, so that's six times 50. Oops, it's 300 a month. That's 3,600. That's one example of, of you know, rent to rent via serviced accommodation you could do it that way i'm not a great lover on those by the way just so you know we still teach how to do them because some people want to do them and that's all right it's just you're exchanging one job for another job in my opinion and that's okay i don't mind doing that and if it's a job on the side that's making it for 300 quid a month that's awesome and that's just one example you might want to get a hmo you might want to convert into two separate flats so you buy a three bed same and you convert to two separate flats you sell one flat you sell the other flat that's where your uplift is uh, it could be HMOs, so you buy a house, you extend it, you put more bedrooms in it, you HMO it, you're going to generate a lot of cash. But the point I'm getting to here is when people go, I haven't got enough money for property. Yes, you have, but you have to create it. Just because you haven't got enough money today doesn't mean that you're not always going to have enough money. you just got to start thinking a little bit more out of the box. That's what entrepreneurs do. We solve problems for people and we get paid in return. Uh, according to the amount of value that we provide those people so my 27 pound trading cost we've got an awesome awesome review in this morning let me just find it uh, i'm going to read it to you such a lovely thing to wake up to so my trading course which is 27 pounds uh and it's priced cheap and we know it's priced cheap but then we make a lot of sales from it so why would we not do that uh, so this was a testimonial from the training course that people are buying right now for 27 quid. Amazing. Just wanted uh, to let you know how much I enjoyed the course. I binged watch all the videos and took loads of notes. I've been wanting to get into sourcing for a year now, but there were areas I lacked confidence in and the course has provided all the tools and information that I was looking for. I now have a new burst of confidence and motivation to get started. I'm fully compliant now and booked onto Tina's course next week. Tina does all the compliance. Uh, to make sure I've done everything and have nearly finished my website. So excited that I'm finally getting somewhere. Thanks so much. I can't thank uh, uh, enough for your help. Have a great day. I mean, how amazing is that to wake up to and get reviews coming in for actually helping people, right? So you're going to get paid in relation to the value that you're giving people. And actually, £27 way too cheap. Um, we had, another review came in and said, the value in that course uh, is more uh, value than the weekend course that I went on that I paid two and a half thousand pounds for. We want to give as much value as possible. That's the whole point. Because when we overload with value, one, we're going to buy it. Well, necessarily, they don't know how much value is in it. But two, we're going to buy the next thing. And we're building relationships and all of that good stuff that comes beyond that. And, and also, by the way, do you think it feels good to wake up and, and get a testimonial like that? Hell yeah, of course it does. Like you should be doing that too, but you've got to build a course that's really going to help people. And when you do that, this becomes automatic. So let me just put 12,000 pounds in there so people know. Let's put some pound signs in as well. So property, let's let's run some numbers on a property then. Uh, so let's take 
I'm not going to run the numbers completely, but on a 70k property, uh, you're going to put what 20% down uh, deposit is 14k. You got stamp duty at three percent, so that's 2,100. Add another thousand pound for closing costs, so that's what 17,100 to get you into a deal. Just checking, you can see that still. That's how much a property deposit on a 70k house is going to get you. 17,100. Are you pretty close to it? Like, could you almost buy one property per year just doing this strategy? Yeah, I think so. Why couldn't you? But it's a stepping stone process. One, two, three. Everybody's looking at this and it's like, well, hold on, you got the money. Yeah, but I'll, I'll, you know, Dan, can you help me? I've got no money. I've got all this credit card debt. Going on a brand new two and a half thousand pound training course is not going to solve that until you start understanding your money and your cash flow and your income and your expenses and your assets and your liabilities. You've got a bigger problem going on right now, which is you don't understand the flow of money because if you did, you wouldn't have credit card debt. People talk to me about how can I get a good return on property? Uh, and I'm like, how much credit card have you got? I've got 20,000 pounds of credit cards. And what APR? 20%? Yeah. So 20 grand's worth of credit cards costing you four thousand pounds in interest payments. It's not even interest payments, in adding more cost onto it, 20%. No property is going to give you 20% return, or very few are gonna, unless you get really lucky. Some do exist, and I've missed out on a couple, by the way. Um, there were some studios in uh, Doncaster, like 70 grand, there were six of them in one block for 70 grand. They all needed refurbing. Honestly, the returns on that was I phoned up and it's gone, it's been snapped up. But they do exist somewhere. Uh, so let me just have a look here. So brother's just saying, so building up your own staff, staff capital is the best strategy. Yes, that's it. Everyone's focused on this. Trying to find a sneaky way of buying this with no money down. Why, why, why are you doing that? You've got a bigger problem. Why have you got no money? Like this is the thing that people don't, kind of talk about it's like this taboo subject well i've got no money and i've got all this credit card debt and i want to buy a million pound property in the next four years what are you talking about you you ain't going to do it because if you did do it you're going to go bust because you ain't got any money and you need these lessons to learn before you can start getting into this everybody wants this without going through the experience remember you get paid twice on this planet the first is an experience the second is in cash right everybody wants a cash nobody wants the experience I've gone through the experience for the last 20 years, which I think qualifies me to talk about this stuff. So I'm living proof of it. I've lived in you know, five GCSEs. I've lived on spuds and beans, potatoes and beans for a month. And it's been hard work working two jobs, 60 hours on one, 20 hours on, on another, then working at Dell was 60 hours, and then I worked 20 hours building my property portfolio. It's hard work. Nobody wants to do that. Build up your capital reserves doing whatever that needs to be done, working two jobs or three jobs, or whatever it needs to be done, I don't recommend working two or three jobs, you should be working one job and building something else as a side hustle. That's how I would do it. But before you get into property, you've got to build up some money. Because if not, you're going to find yourself coming a little bit undone, quite honestly. Nobody talks about this stuff on property courses, do they? Oh, they buy this property with no money down. Woo! High five the next person, say, you're amazing. Like, seriously. You, you've got to start building up some reserves, but this £15,000 is almost 17 grand, right? Cut your costs by £200 a month. You've got your extra £200, uh, £2,000 to get you into this deal. This deal will probably give you, should we do the maths on this? Uh, so it's what, 70K minus 14 is 56. So you've got a mortgage at 56, let's say 3%. That's low, by the way, and I'm uncomfortable doing three. Let's do four. So we're financing £56,000. I love doing these live, by the way. So uh, if you don't know how to do this, go get your calculator. 56000 times 3% is 1680 divided by 12 is £140. A 70k property, you'll get, what, 450 uh, rent, let me just make sure you can see that on the board still. I've got this ginormous board and I'm actually running out of space. Let me just move this. 
Yeah, there we go. You can still see that. So the rent is four fifty. So approximately what three hundred quid. I'm uncomfortable with three hundred pounds. So let's call it two hundred and fifty pound profit. Let's say you've got some insurance, you've got some void, you've got some extra expenses. Two hundred and fifty quid. You can still see that. That's fine. Which is three k per month. That's year one. What happens? That then comes up here. Now you've got eighteen thousand pounds for year two. Guess what you're going to do in year two? Exactly the same again, and repeat and repeat and repeat. And the idea is at least three thousand pounds every single year. They start getting faster and faster and faster. And this is what it looks like. I'll get rid of all this. This is actually what it looks like. Actually, can I? I'm not twisted this round. I'm not going to. This is what it looks like when you start working on this. It's slow to begin with, and nobody wants to get rich slow. That's the problem. Nobody wants to get rich slow. This is what it looks like. You've got time, and you've got wealth. Uh, today, 20 years, right? This is 2020. This is 23, uh, 2040. So you've got 20 years. This is what that, that graph looks like. This is what's really funny, actually. I should have left a little bit more space. But your graph starts here because you're negative, right? You don't have any wealth. This is zero. This is, I don't know, a million, say. Oh, let's put 10 million. Why not? You're starting here, right? Because you're negative wealth. And it, it takes ages. It takes ages. It takes ages. And it, woof. Now, if you were to look at Warren Buffett's wealth, exactly the same. If you were to look at my wealth, exactly the same, 20 years, right? I don't know where I am on this. I think I'm about, I don't know where I'm at. I'm probably about here. And this year and next year is probably here, actually, for me. Because we can feel it. We can see it in all the stuff that we're doing. We're buying businesses. We're buying properties. And this is just going up. And that's probably more or less where we are. And the next 20 years, I'm 47, so 67. The next 20 years, are, I'll be up here somewhere. That's the plan. Might work, might not work. Most people, they think it's like this. No, actually, most people think it's like this. That's how most people think it is. I'm going to book that out and put it in red. <laughs> Dramatic effect. Most people think you start off wealthy. And for some reason, your wealth decreases as time progresses. That's how most people want it to be. Um, and then I suppose some people think it's like this, where it's just a straight line. And it's totally not. On wealth building, it's totally not a straight line. It takes freaking ages. But by the way, put your comments in down below. Happy to answer any questions that you may have. Um, it takes time to build your wealth and people think I need to start on property straight away and that's not what people should be doing right here you've got to be working on cash flow and then here that translates into assets now you might be building assets to generate cash flow along the way okay and it might not be property they might be building online training courses, creating a business. You might create a plumber's business. One of the businesses we've literally just this week created, we've got a limited company through, is a property repairs, maintenance, and a cleaning business. That's one of the businesses we've just created. In addition to that, uh, we've, we've got another business that I can't talk about that we've just created, which is called a special purchase vehicle, an SPV, because we're about to buy a building company, hopefully, touch wood. Where's wood? Got to touch wood. Uh, but that's going to go through. That's a two million pound company, and then we want to our next and our next and our next. Okay, so it could be that's what you're doing. You're creating businesses that generates cash flow. A business is still an asset because you can sell it, but it's, it's based on cash flow. And I've had arguments with people in the past. People going, no, no, you should be buying property for capital appreciation. That's really risky. Why don't you just go to the casino and put fifty grand on red and hope that it, it, you know the, the roulette reel comes up like I, I don't invest like that i want to i want sure thing invest 
thing. I, I want to get wealthy. I don't want to get risky. So buying for the sake of capital growth, look, capital growth will happen all on its own. It's not for me to determine what's going up fast and what isn't, because it's not out, out in my control. What is in my control is the amount of cash flow that I can generate through business and through properties, maybe. And then that then translates into assets. Doing a lot of diagrams today. Don't normally do as many of these. Is this good stuff, by the way? Just give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying this. And if you've got any questions, let me know as well. But the only reason you should be buying, uh, you should be uh, creating a business. The only reason you create a business, uh, let's do it this way, is for cash. And the only reason you want cash is because that buys assets. And the only reason you want assets is because that gives you cash flow. And that buys your car, just to tie it into what we were saying 10 minutes ago, your house, your food, your toys, whatever toys are for you, your yacht, your speedboat, your Porsche, your holiday home. And then the cash flow buys more assets. This cash continually buys more assets. That turns into more cash flow, but then buys more assets. And do you remember the picture of the bath? And the bath is filling up with, with cash, so much so it overflows. The reason you get to that point is because your assets are generating so much cash flow that you end up buying more assets. At first, you're going to buy one property a year. Then you're going to buy, uh, I don't know, one property every 11 months. And then it's one property every 10 months. And then one property every nine months. And one property every eight. One property every seven months. One property every six months. That's two properties a year. And you, you're buying these assets which are generating cash flow, which enable you to buy more assets. Then you're buying one property every five months. One property every four months. Now you're up to three properties a year. Your assets are generating more cash flow, more and more cash flow. More and more cash flow might also allow you to spend some of this. Let me get rid of this here. It might allow you to spend some of that cash flow on either growing the business even more so it generates more cash or buying an extra business which enables more cash which then buys more assets, which gen generates more cash flow, which will either buy more assets or buy more businesses. That's wealth creation. That's how you grow it. That's it, 101. Why this is not explained at events, I have no idea. I, well, I have a fair old idea. It's because I want to give you a high five, tell people how successful they are, tell them they're going to be a millionaire next year and buy my £10,000 call. I get that's why they do it. It's running an event at a five-star hotel, where do you think the money comes from to pay for that stuff? It's not this, by the way. One of their businesses, let's, let's break down this because this is uh, quite important. Their business is a training business. Uh, as I've shown you with my online training, that's a training business. That generates cash that then generates more assets that's then generating more cash flow to either buy more businesses or more assets that then generates more cash flow. That's why some of the people in the industry are crazy on selling businesses, how to buy property with no money down, even though they might not have done it themselves, but, you know, they're going to teach other people how to do it. And we know there's people out there doing that right now. So that's what most people, uh, that's what these people are doing, but it's a training business and they're actually buying the property because of the training business, which came first, the chicken or the egg. The training business or the asset. And for a lot of people, it came from the training business. Now, I'm opposite to that. As, as usual, I do everything the wrong way around. I actually focused on assets first and not the cash flow. And that was a mistake. Base, uh, sorry, let me rephrase that. I bought assets only on properties that didn't cash flow anywhere near as well as they could have done. Then when I'm like, oh, I get it now. Then we started adding more value to the properties then we can generate more cash flow and then we can start uh, buying more properties and so on and that's how we had that quick growth uh, you remember that that graphic where it takes uh, ages like we, we were buying lots and lots of properties right at the start but most people in the education their income comes from businesses that then allows them to buy assets but I'm not, i don't have a problem with that I, don't, I, I really don't have a problem with that have you got any questions folks we've been going 40 minutes we're going to call it if you've got no questions. 
Uh, so we'll just wait a minute because uh, some people might be typing. Oh, by the way, let me just see. Brother was just saying, uh, never learned this in school. Thank you, brother. Uh, yeah, I know. The reason why you're not taught this in school is because school wants you to be an automaton. Uh, you know, the, you know, it's a little bit controversial, is, is this? But uh, you know the film The Matrix. Uh, okay. You know the film The Matrix. How we are batteries for the machines. That's kind of where we are right now, except we are tax batteries. We're born, we go to school, we get a job. We pay 20% tax, 10% national insurance. We have offspring, they, they're born, they go to school, they get a job. Basically, the government takes one third uh, of your life away from you, all of your money. If you're in business, you can control your tax much more. Corporations, as we know, Amazon, Google, Starbucks, everybody complains about them, but they still use Google, right? Not hypocritical at all. But this is the reality of the situation. Through using uh, vehicles such as businesses and property and so on, you, you have more control over tax than you would normally. Uh, question, uh, can dividends to investments be passive? Yeah, let's look at um, shares. Uh, so I've got, for example, AT and T, AT and T, which is the American communication company. They have a six percent dividend. Now the the problem with shares is that if you if you put hundred thousand pounds into AT and T, that's six thousand pounds a year. It's only six hundred pounds a month. You can't live on that. Okay, if you put a uh, hundred grand into what did we say earlier? Seventeen thousand pounds per property. Let's work out these. This is why I'm in property, and it's good just to uh, do these examples again. So a hundred thousand. Well, let's do it by twenty because we can do that maths actually. Let's do twenty grand deposits into property uh, equals five houses, uh, which is. 250 a month, which is £3,000 a year, times five is 15000 So you're comparing this £15,000 income with this £6,000 income. That's why I put my money into, into property. Controversial, I think. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I can't advise you for any finances. I don't recommend that you buy at and I don't recommend that you do anything. I recommend that you get educated as much as possible and learn and contemplate how all this stuff works and make your own decisions. I'm not a financial advisor. I've got to make that really clear, obviously, for legal reasons. But for me, this for me makes better sense. I can make 15 grand on the same 100,000 or I can make 6,000 pounds. This is 9,000 pounds more. I'm doubling two and a half times that income right there. However, this, the difference, this one is completely passive. I don't have to do anything. I don't have to deal with tenants. I don't have to deal with gas certificates or people not paying rent or the risk is lower. The risk is with AT&T. The guys who work at AT&T are much more qualified than I am. The CEO of AT&T lives, eats and breathes, te uh, breathes telecom. I have no idea about telecoms. I don't want to know. So it depends on what your level of risk is and how much work you, you're happy to put in. For me, this makes total sense. You know, now we've just acquired a 50% stake in a lettings agency in Leeds. We've got a repairs company. Uh, we're looking at buying more construction firms. Uh, and some of those conversations are crazy when we look at them. Um, <laughs> crazy code. But for me, this works perfectly. It's exactly what I want to do. However, that's not for everybody. And some people love uh, stocks and shares. The thing you can't do with stocks and shares, I'm putting 20 grand in per house. And these are 70k houses so i'm leveraging other people's money via a mortgage but that for me works and i think my friends uh that will call it right there because we're in danger of just going on for all day which is not a problem for me uh, <laughs> i can talk forever all right hope that's useful so we are live again on monday business growth show if you've got any uh thing you'd like me to cover on monday more than happy to go through that 
other than that have yourselves a wicked weekend please stay safe in the current climate both in terms of social gatherings uh, i know people are feeling very strongly right now with some of the stuff that's going on in america uh, and if you're going to attend social gatherings to demonstrate please keep your distance please wear a mask stay as safe as you can and uh, if you're going to stay uh, at home then perfect as well uh, whatever works for you but stay safe have yourselves a wicked weekend we'll speak to you on monday my name's dan latter take care